The latest trailer for Assassin's Creed Valhalla lacked any gameplay, and along with that, and equally as bad, the history was once again hit and miss. If we look at this at the very start of the trailer, once again we see what looks like a stab church. Once again, those are Christian Scandinavian churches. They do not fit in the Viking Age. Now, I understand they're probably using these to represent some type of Nordic temple or Mead Hall or center government building, which is often done, kind of like what Skyrim did with their Nords, but Nords aren't Vikings, just inspired by Vikings. Then we see that we go into this building, I take it, I assume, and the thing, the biggest problem that stands out to me here is that tripod sitting in the fire. That's a fire hazard. We have a literal fire hazard in a wooden building. Now, you might go, well, what about the fire pit in the middle? Actually, that's not entirely historically inaccurate. Some long houses, which are like long buildings that we often house, so also meat halls or main civic centers would have a fire pit down the middle for cooking and for warmth though it probably wouldn't be the main thing providing light and those buildings were long and narrow not large square cross-shaped buildings like these staff churches um the food on the table i i think it looks pretty good i don't really notice anything i i off the bat notice is inaccurate though People sitting on the table, I think that would be, not that it wouldn't happen, people would, but if this is supposed to be like some king or chief's court, I think that would be viewed as disrespectful. Even the Vikings had some manners of respect that you would follow. But the clothing I think looks mostly good, though I think some might be of a later era, like that woman in the blue and white, her type of overdress or apron seems like probably say of a later era. Does yeah, but mostly the things here I think look right. If we go on we see this interior of this building again. I like the knot work in it that is a very Nordic design. Though this does once again look very much like a staff church. That very much look like the knot work that you see inside a staff church. And uh, but it would also exist within Nordic buildings in the Viking Age, which is good. But we got hanging from the posts, we have these brazers, which isn't really something they would use for lighting. You would occasionally have a brazier for heating, but it'd be low to the ground in those cases. And it wouldn't be saying you use for lighting, because that's a lot of fire, it actually doesn't provide that much light for the amount of fire you're producing. It'd be hard to refill, and also rather much of fire hazard. But I do like the candles. Now the little candle on the side of the post, I'm not sure how accurate that is, or the chandeliers, but candles would be the primary thing. I'm not sure about can chandeliers using horns to hold the candles, but maybe it was done. I just don't know of it. And then the people sitting on the crossbeam, how did they get up there? But, but it is possible. I'm just wondering how they got up there and why they're up there. Then we go and see a statue of what well, I must assume must be Thor, as it's clearly a Nordic god, and he's holding a hammer. Seems like Jesus was probably supposed to be Thor. They have to say the model of this, if this is supposed to be how it looks in the game, is pretty low poly. But moving on from that, the relative design of it looks pretty good. I think it would be saying that they could and probably would have made. It seems similar to many stone carved monuments they have, and I do know that they did have wooden ones, so it does seem to fit. Going on past this, we see a Viking longship setting out to sail. I take it to on the right, probably your ship. It's setting out in winter. Now, there are some accounts that seem to claim that they did a raid in winter, as some accounts of the raid of Lindisfar say it occurred in January. Though some assume this might be a mistranslation of it, because some of the other accounts of it said it happened in June, and there is a possibility of mistranslations of those things. Depending on how it was written, the names, the month they were written could be mistranslated. So it's probably more of likely in the summer, which would make more sense as traveling across the North Sea is a lot easier in the summer than it is in the winter. 
So, probably more likely to set out in summer already, maybe spring. Once again, if we see another longship, well, this might be our same longship. It, because the cell looks the same, but I think the ship looks a little different, but the ship still looks good. It's a smaller size longship, and it's good. But then we got the stone town distance on the cliff that I felt looks something more later medieval, even maybe renaissance in this style. There were stone towers, and they, they existed for a long time, but that style, if, I can't really tell because you don't see it too close, but I feel it looks a little out of place. Going later, we see the longship pulling up towards what I must assume must be England. And we have this raven flying above. I'm glad they did demonstrate the Vikings' use of ravens when out at sea. But there's some inaccuracies with how they're just picking the raven. The raven is flying to the ship towards the land. But that's not how it would be. They released ravens to see if the land was nearby. If the land was nearby, the raven either wouldn't return, or the raven would return from the land with, like, a planet in its mouth. And that way they would know that land was that direction. If the raven returned with nothing, then they knew there wasn't land nearby. And so they'd keep on selling, or turn around. But here, why is the bird coming from the sea to them when the land's opposite direction? Probably just for dramaticness, but it doesn't really fit. Also, I couldn't get it very well in the image, but we see that it appears to be either spring or summer in England. They set out in winter. Why is the weather and seasons different? If it's winter in Scandinavia, it's going to be winter in England and Scotland. That's how it works. They're pretty close together. Moving forward, we see what I assume must be one of our Anglo-Saxon soldiers overlooking the landscape of the castle. First, once again, we have kite shield. This kite shield is out of date. The earliest kite shields are from the 10th century. This game is set during the reign of Alfred the Great, during the Great Heathen Army, which is during the 9th century. So that is out of date. Also, we seem to have a Byzantine symbol on the shield, as I mentioned previously. And the rest of his gear seems to look fine. I think the symbol on the flag is fine. I think might fit into one of the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms, though I'm not a sure. I do not know all the symbols, but it seems like to fit a little more. Now that castle though in the distance, that looks way out of date. That looks like probably more of a 14th century castle down there. So hundreds of years too early. But Stonehenge is completely fine. Stonehenge is much older. So this is perfect. This is just perfectly fine. It probably looked roughly like this, though maybe a few more stones knocked over. Moving forward, we see we have some Anglo-Saxon soldiers inside of a gate. I don't know why they're all standing with torches. Torches were occasionally used for lighting. They're normally longer and taller torches that could burn longer. They would be actually taller than a man. Uh, and you wouldn't need that many of them. More often, though, you probably use lamps or candles. But if you need lots of light, you could use a really tall torch. But I do love the t helmets they have on, they have cloaks. We can't really see the rest of it, but the shields are round shields. Their shields should be round shields, that nice. But they should probably also be painted and covered with some type of covering and decorated. We actually have Anglo-Saxon laws about every man, when they made their shield, was required to make it a specific way. And required that it was covered with raw hide to increase its strength. And so that is lacking here. But moving on, we get to see a close-up of one of these guys. His tunic of the yellow with red border, that looks good. The cloak looks good. The brooch holding the cloak over to the side, that looks really good. He has, feels like his helmet has metal hanging from it. I'm not sure if you have anything with that helmet, but that's fine. Someone could have, so I'm not sure why he doesn't have a metal Halberg on if he has some metal on his helmet, maybe he couldn't yeah, afford it. So he got the helmet with that and he's probably get it later. His undershirt looks good. The belt, I'm not 100 sure about, but it's it's possible. And that helmet, the helmet looks really great. It looks like many Anglo-Saxon helmets. And the guy behind them, to the left, his helmet also looks like many Anglo-Saxon helmets. So that looks really good. But once again, our Vikings attire is a hodgepodge. It is random. That's not how Vikings dress. They actually dress very similar to the Anglo-Saxons. 
If we want to see what the Vikings would more look like, this. The Vikings probably look roughly like this Anglo Saxon. Roughly the same. They dress pretty similar. You see it depicted in the art. It looks rather similar. Not like this. This does look epic, this does look dramatic, but this isn't how they dressed. But the ship does look good. Moving on, we see this fight between, I guess, our main character. I don't know how to pronounce his name right. Fighting some Anglo Saxon. And I have no idea what any of these people are wearing. It's all inaccurate, except for the helmet. I think the helmet's good. And the two underneath that weird, I guess, leather thing. It's not only like breastplate, backplate, I don't know what that is. That's just not accurate. I have no idea what that is. If that was hardened leather that could actually work as armor, you wouldn't be able to bend and move well because it goes way down past the waist. And that's very important. You do not want armor to go down past the waist. Well, I mean, you do not want the breastplate and backplate of armor to go down past the waist. It stops you roughly at the natural waist, and then you have other pieces of armor that go down past that. But such breastplates as that would not be fitting at this time period. And no, you can't really make armor of flexible leather. It needs to be hardened, otherwise it would be cut through easily. Now you can make a flexible form of armor out of hardened leather, and that's called scale. Though we don't really have much evidence for scale armor among the Vikings and Anglo-Saxons. There is evidence for it among other peoples, but not much around them. Though there are some references of a leather armor in some things. Now, moving forward, we see a siege of a castle. There's a few problems here. Anglo-Saxons did not have castles. The Normans brought the castles in 1066. Long after this, that's the 11th century, at the end of the Viking Age, they brought castles. But the castles they brought did not look like this. This looks like a castle from the 14th or 15th century, with the gatehouse, with those rounded front towers, the Great Fortifications, it looks like something much later, way later than this. It's completely out of place. I think it might be inspired or actually based on an actual castle in England, but that was built long after this time. So this is not fitting for that. But the ca but the, and the castle also looks like it's been through many battles already. If we move forward, we see now and one of the Viking characters, usually a long bow, or some type of bow, like a long bow, Lucera. That is good, that's fine, they would have such things. And then in that case, he should actually be wearing a bracelet, since all of the archers would wear bracelets. Though, I'm a little confused by, well, it's possible for one to be left-handed, but I guess this character is left-handed. I just say, I just noticed, I looked at this previously, but didn't notice that, he's left-handed here. Or some ways decide to use his bow in his offhand. Because normally you hold your bow in your offhand and loose with your dominant hand, but he's holding the bow in his dominant hand and loose with his offhand. That's right. Also, the shields seem a small and once again, iron rims, which isn't really anything with them. Well, and the castle is not correct. But we'll also talk about, we see two what appear to be ballistas here. There's two type of weapons with the arms and the case boxes up there on the castle. One in front of the town, one right next to it. They seem a little wider than normal blisters, but that's okay. I think there are examples of ones that wide. And they could have still been used by this point. Ballistas, because ballistas were occasionally still used during the medieval period, and they actually picked back up more use during the later medieval period. But this time, with the many broken down small kingdoms, they were a lot less common. It is possible that the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms may have had one or two, or may have a few more, add some four or five positions around that they still use, but they were less common as it was hard to maintain and produce them with the smaller infrastructure they had. So as those aren't entirely inaccurate to be there, they're not necessarily accurate to be there either, as it would be saying harder for them to produce, but they could theoretically be there, unlike this castle, which no, would not be there. So while this trailer is hit and miss, we get some things that are historically accurate, like the Anglo-Saxon's outfit was really good. And some things are not so good, like this castle, which does look great for a castle of the 14th or 15th century, not of the Viking Age. But, and it's just like 
But they say it's supposed to be a game by trailer, and it's not. It's supposed to be inspired by history. It's roughly. Not that close. But we'll see when the game comes out. Maybe it's actually closer when the game comes out. Maybe we'll, we'll see more. We'll see. We'll see. And another thing I forgot to mention. He has his quiver on his belt on the side. That's actually really good. Most often in this year, people would wear their quivers on their side. Now, there are examples. In our work, of people wearing their quivers on the back. Just look at the Bay of Tapestry. We see both depicted. But on their side, it's depicted more often, as it makes it a little easier to draw and use. And so that is it. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe.